it's very important that that we understand protocol because if 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 we don't get this message, we could be um, missing out on opportunities to take our ministries to the next level. I, I pray that you listen to the message. It's scriptural. Um, I pray that you are affected. We could be turning people away, guys. Um, you know, there's protocol in everything. There's protocol in family when dealing with children, protocol with your marriages. You know, there's protocols in the cities. You know, you when there's a, a sidewalk and it tells you only walk on the sidewalk, if you're walking in the street, you're going to get a ticket. So you got to understand protocol. Uh, we're going to get into it. I think it's going to open uh, open up your thoughts. Here we go. Before we get into prayer, guys, protocol is a system of rules that explain the correct conduct and procedures to be followed in formal situations. So if there's anybody out there, you want to be a hip hop artist, you want to be a, somebody that speaks publicly in the town square, you want to be somebody that speaks to the assemblyman, congressman, congressional, the presidential, vice president, you want to be somebody that speaks as a keynote speaker, uh, anything to do with public. I'm an evangelist. I've been blessed to be an evangelist uh, since I was young. So we had to learn protocol, not just one way of doing things, but there's millions of different protocols out there. There's ethnic groups and, and, there, and there's different churches. There's the Victory Outreach, there's Curbside Community Center, there's the Calvary Chapels, there's the Praise Chapels, Hope Chapels, uh, United Methodist, the, the Baptist, Southern Baptist, the Baptist Convention. Uh, there's all kinds of different denominations, chaplain, chaplaincies, prisons, and there's a million different protocols. So to say that you understand the protocol is kind of off because I don't even understand the protocol. And we've been spending over two decades understanding millions of protocols and there's millions of more protocols. So let this be an opportunity to learn, guys. Um, as a, uh, here are some of my protocols and I pray that you would jot down, you would write, what, what is it that you do for myself? I'm a worshiper. I'm a husband. So I have to understand protocol when I worship, how to flow, how to act, uh, the proper mannerisms. Do I have table manners when I come into worship? Do I have table manners as a husband, father, grandfather, a leader of families? I say leader of families, not just one family, but families. I'm a bishop, I'm an evangelist, pastor, chaplain, man of God, hip hop artist. I'm an artist because our style of music isn't just hip hop. It's contemporary, it's worship, it's it's rock, it, it's underground, it's it's all kinds of different styles. It's a reggaeton, it's Latin, it, it, it's si tu veras fe como un grano de mostaza. It's different. So we have to understand that in every genre and every every denomination every every everywhere that you go publicly uh you have to have you have to understand and you got to ask god for wisdom i'm an entertainer i'm a radio host tv host keynote speaker i'm an advocate with missing and murdered indigenous an advocate for fentanyl an advocate for national youth i'm an advocate for for veterans i'm an advocate for the homeless homeless veterans I'm a liaison. I'm an ambassador, uh, an indigenous representative. I'm a national party director, uh, U.S. presidential candidate. I'm a congressional candidate. I'm a mentor, educator, pioneer, producer, community person, public servant, entrepreneur, homeowner. I'm a coach. I coach leaders and people all over the United States and North America. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a team player. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a friend and there's there's so many more things that I do, but I just wanted to just you write down what you do because there is protocol and it's all different in everything that we do. And 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 if you listen to what's going to be shared tonight, you will be effective doors. The windows of heaven will open up an opportunity for longevity for they're going to keep inviting you back. They're going to keep inviting you back. They're going to keep inviting you back, Nini. But if we don't respect order, if we don't respect the pastor, if we don't even shake the pastor's hand when we show up to church and we don't even shake the hand of the pastors when we leave the church, then then we're disrespectful. and We're not honoring order. Uh, we have to honor order the way we handle money. We have to. Family, guys, it's very important that there's a structure and order in family, in the church, 
and governments. And I say governments because I do I do work in the United States of America, but I have to work with the government of American Samoa. I have to work sometimes with the government of China. I have to work with the Apache Nation. I have to work with the Navajo Nation. I have to work with the different denominations in their governments, evangelistic, apostolic, prophet. I have to work with all these different governments. So it's very important that we understand it's just a learning process. The native community, the streets has a government, uh, the different name. You can't just walk into Boyle Heights, East LA, and, and, and with an attitude that, that is full of pride. We have to be humble in the prisons, in the culture, when it comes to culture, with law enforcement. Uh, there's times that I'm sharing my testimonial to the DEA, uh, the sheriff's departments, the, the police departments, uh, the military, all branches, the Marines, the National Guard, the, the Navy. It, God is going to take us, and it's scriptural, guys. We're going to get the youth, uh, people that are my age, my peers, the seniors, marriages, the singles, our countrymen, foreigners. There's foreigners that are here in our country, and there's a certain protocol that we have to flow in at work. Our followers, and I say followers, I don't say our fans. I'm saying our followers. There's a there's groups of people throughout the world that follow our SOG crew music. I have to be a team player. So tonight, guys, we're going to be talking about protocol and the code of conduct. I pray this helps out your ministry. I pray if you are considering being a leader, if you're considering uh, being a missionary, like I've, I've raised my kids on the mission field since they were babies. I've, I've raised my kids in the in, in the prisons of Mexico, villages of Mexico for many years. I've raised my kids in the in the mission fields of Alaska, uh, just about every state, guys. So protocol, it's an agreement. It's a treaty. You, We have to walk in every area as a treaty with rules and guidelines. I didn't spell that right. Uh, to communicate the correct etiquette, polite behavior, good mannerisms. We have to be courteous. We're going to get into the word. Please understand and make a note, civility. I am an ambassador of civility, guys. And I pray that you are also an ambassador that understands the customs. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I praise, I thank God that we understand the church. You might understand the church government, but if you're going to be effective in Orange County, L.A. County, Riverside County, if you're going to be effective in the IE, San Diego County, Northern California, to live in Southern California and to go to Northern California, you better understand the customs very fast. To, to, to work in, in El Paso and, 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 there's, and there's street wars and violence in Yuma and there's violence and you better understand the customs very quick, guys. So we're going to get into the word. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Father, I, we lift up tonight's word, Father. Uh, we pray for you to enlighten us and open up, mighty God, our thinking, our open up, mighty God, and give us a fresh vision, Lord, on the subject of protocol and how to how to act at work, how to act at school, mighty God, how to act in ministry and family, oh Lord Jesus. Uh, we, we, we cry out for a fresh anointing, mighty God. I pray that we wouldn't have the attitude that we know it all, mighty God, but Father, there's a lot more to learn, mighty God. Father, we lift up all those that understand the Bible, mighty God. I pray that they would that you would launch them and thrust them, mighty God, into a new dimension for your service publicly, mighty God. We praise you. We thank you, mighty God, and we honor you. And, and I'm very, I'm, I'm in the name of Jesus, and I'm very grateful that I raised my children in this, and they're ve very, they're well-versed in this, guys. I would, there's a lot of people that I'm trying to help out. There's a bunch of young artists, hip hop, and, and, to, be, and to, be, to be honest with you, um, it's very difficult because a lot of them, they don't have pastors. A lot of them, they're, un, they're, they're unteachable. A lot of them, they're very talented. A lot of them, they got the best music. They're, they want the thousand likes on Instagram. They're very talented. They look good, sharp, but a lot of them don't have kids. A lot of them, they're not homeowners. A lot of them aren't paying bills. They're still living it with their mom and dad. A lot of them just, and, and, and us, we have to understand this while we're raising a family, while we're paying taxes. While, so I want to encourage everybody, guys, there is a protocol and, 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 and God wants to use you, whether you're young, you're my age or you're older, guys. So 
Tonight's message is titled Protocol um, and Code of Conduct. Let's get ready. Let's get into the word in the name of Jesus. Uh, if you have your Bible, please turn to James chapter 1, verse 5. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, what does it mean to, to lack wisdom? God wants you, if you're lacking in what I'm saying, if, if, if you feel you have a need to understand what I'm saying and it's just going over your head, you have to crave. You need to want this wisdom. You need to want it. it when it says, if anybody lacks, that means you need to understand and open up your eyes that we don't know it all, so we have to want it. If any of us lacks wisdom, what is wisdom? We need the full intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, understanding of what we're saying. God wants to make you effective in every county. Keep it in mind, uh, when I ran for uh, vice president of the United States of America in 2012 on the general election ballot, that opened up the door to every county, guys, in California. So I needed the full intelligence and and. It opened up the door to every single Native American community in California. So as a Christian man who's a pastor uh, and I've been an evangelist, a bishop, we have to, yes, we understand there's government in the church and raising up a family and a team in your community. But now we need the full intelligence, Elvia Wilson, to understand what God wants, to, wants us to do to be effective and be the light in this world. Full intelligence in diverse matters so when we say god i want wisdom what that means is diverse i need wisdom in the church i need wisdom uh uh, uh in, in diverse numerous ways and, and we need wisdom when it comes to the streets to the young people to the military to the homeless diverse and numerous a lot of us are just give me wisdom but are we asking god for numerous multiple uh, for our wisdom to to multiply in, in a diverse way uh, in different uh, ethnic groups to the African-American community, the Asian community, the Filipinos, to, to La Raza, to the, the, the people from other nations, to, 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 to the Caucasians, to uh, females, males. Now uh, in this world, there's transgenders, there's different so how are we going to be effective, guys? And I say that in love. I'm not. We have to find the solution fast, with fast wisdom, guys. Diverse. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let them ask of God that gives to all men liberally. Are we are we asking God because God is going to give us openly? What that means is when God blesses us, He does it openly. God. God isn't just raising us up to hide us, guys. God is not raising us up to conceal us. God is raising us up so that it is evident that we are uh, 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 laying hands of this, on the sick in the hospitals. We're going to the senior citizens publicly. We're going to the prisons publicly. I'm on the radio. I'm on the TV. I'm on the AM, FM. I'm on the college radios. I'm on the internet. I'm on series. I'm, 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 he's not raising you up to hide you, but when we cry out, God, open up and give me wisdom, he's not concealing it and there's no deception. So when it comes to protocol, he's, he, he's anointing you, he's raising you up and there's no deception and he's doing it publicly, guys. I love you out there. Uh, it says, and abradeth not. What does it mean that he's opening you up openly He's blessing you. He's giving you wisdom openly and abradeth not. When God raises you up, he doesn't criticize you. When God takes you to the next level, see, we have to solve the issues when it comes to the economy. That's our job. We should be, hey, you know what? God gave me the vision to, to save, to, to, to find how to, how to cure AIDS, how to cure diabetes, how, you, how to cure uh, cancers, how to cure depression, or are we... God's not raising us up to criticize us and abuse us and insult us and, and denounce. What does it mean to denounce? To pro God is not raising you up to publicly pronounce you as evil. So, so praise God for that. He doesn't abrade us and it shall be given. Are you asking? We need to ask. So if we're going to understand protocol and there's a million protocols, guys, there's not just one protocol. 
there's a there's a billion trillion styles of protocol that we are going to spend the rest of our lives uh, trying to understand in the name of Jesus. And, and it's a humbling process, guys. And for those people that are coming to our team, oh, I already know that. No, you don't know that because you've never worked with Native American communities. There's witchcraft. Uh, there's there's black magic. You got you got Native American communities in Wisconsin uh, that they publicly uh, 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 they publicly practice Wiccan. There, you know, there's different styles. Of, you got to reach that Muslim. You got to reach that Mormon. You got to reach that Joe. So, so God is having us reach different styles of atheists and different people in the world and political. And so, so praise God that you understand the church. Praise God that you're effective in the church. But now I want you to open your eyes that God wants to make you effective outside of the church. Tonight's message is titled Protocol and code of conduct. Guys, we're gonna do a whole message on this. I don't think this is gonna be a one night thing. This is gonna be a long message, guys. I, I remember when we, we were young, we studied the subject of apostle uh, and it took about a five year program to do that. Um, First Corinthians 14, get ready guys. It says, for God is not the author of confusion, so you as a minister, you as a representative, you as a leader, gotta, you got to understand that there is no confusion. God is not an author of confusion and disorder. So some people, they, they, will, they will, oh, I'm a last day's prophet. Oh, I got the anointing. I'm a man of God. And, and, and keep it in mind that God is not an author of confusion. So there shouldn't be disorder when, when you go and you minister. There's no tumult, meaning it's not a loud noise of uh, uh, of confusion, guys. Because, you know, when God brings you in to minister, it should be as a blessing not to bring gossip, not to talk about the señoras, not to talk about the worship. You know, when God, when, when you say, Pastor, I'm here to submit, uh, we shouldn't be preaching discord and gossip and hearsays because that's not of God. God is not an author of confusion and instability. So, so one of the things, if we want to be effective, because the world, the world, they're entrepreneurs, they're they're successful in, in money, they're successful in business. They could they could read you if if, if oh I'm a, I'm so effective in my church, but then we go to the to to reach the business people and we have a spirit of instability. We we say yes, but we do no. We say no, but we we, we do yes, you know, and so it's very important that we be predict predictable. A lot of people, they they want to, they, they say they know protocol, but they're unpredictable. They don't show up when they're supposed to show up. They, they say one thing, but they do another thing. They say they're on fire and super happy, but they're super depressed. And it's very important when it comes to ministry, when it comes to public service, when it comes to reaching our families, when it comes to being a representative of your community, your neighborhood, your state of California, Orange County, the, the United States of America, we have to be predictable. We cannot be unpredictable, guys. It says, but of peace, God is not an author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. And, 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 and pay attention, what I'm about to say, it says, let your women keep silence in the churches. And, and I, don't, I don't think it's about preaching. I think it's about gossip. You know, there's some women that, that they come into the church. Oh, this is how my pastor did it. And this is how we did it in my old church. But they're putting down the worship leader. They're putting down uh, uh, the women because maybe their dresses are all the way down to their feet. They're putting down because so-and-so has makeup on. They're putting down the brother that just got saved because he has pink hair, purple hair. He's putting down uh, the, the youth because they're from the hood, the projects. You know, it's very important. It says, let your women keep silent in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. 
for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church when, when, when some and, and you know there's some men that act like this they come they come to the church and all of a sudden they start criticizing everybody they criticize the sound equipment the sound engineer they criticize uh, uh the person giving ties they they, they 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 criticize everybody and it says in verse 36 what came the word of god out from you did you come up with the word of god and then it says or did it just come only to you did god only give the word to you only and and the answer is no he gave it you know for god so loved the whole world verse 37 says if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge that the things that i write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So keep it in mind when it comes to protocol, God wants us to be effective. If you remember, Peter said to Paul, he said, I will, we will be the apostles of the Jews in the church. We will be the leaders of the church. And you, Paul, and you, Barnabas, you guys be the leaders of the hood. You guys go into the hoods. You guys go to those, those Mexican mafia guys, those Hell's Angel guys. You guys go to them, them people on fentanyl. You, you, you go to them crazy psycho locos. You, you go to them sick ones. You go to the ones that want to commit suicide. That's who your church is. It says, but if any man be ignorant, what does the word ignorant mean? It says, if anybody be ignorant, let him be ignorant not to know guys this is a time that we we need to cry out god give me wisdom because you give it to me publicly mighty god it says wherefore brethren i want you to covet prophecy this is going to be a good word wherefore brethren in verse 39 covet prophecy what does covet mean it means i, I need you I need you to covet prophecy. I need you to speak life over these people that are suicidal. It says burn in zeal in pursuit of God. I want you to burn on fire and I want you to prophesy. I want you to speak life. Don't, you don't, oh, here's my card and, and here's my little prophet card. And, and you know what? I used to work with, with Puff Daddy and, 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 and I used to work with, with uh, Reinhard Bunky and, and I used to be the, the, the last days. You don't need to say all that. What you do, what we have to do is burn in zeal in pursuit of God. And, and we need to covet prophecy. We need to, in the name of, you know, bro, you know, pastor, this is the first time I've been here at this church. You know what? Who are you, brother Ornelas? You know what? I'm somebody that's crying out. If you give me an opportunity, I will clean toilets. If you give me an opportunity, I will vacuum your floor. I, I will paint your youth room. I will go out there and talk. I'll evangelize door to door. But while I am here, I burn on fire pursuing God and I covet prophecy. I will speak life to the worst ones. I don't, I don't need to be, I don't need the pulpit. I don't need the microphone. But what I do need, Pastor, is, is an opportunity to speak life over this city, over these gangsters, over these cholos, over these, these Asian mafias, God, in the over these bloods and crips i need i need all i want is an opportunity i don't need no money i don't need the microphone i don't need to be seen i don't need for people to uh, uh share my name what i do need is an opportunity to speak live i could do it from wherever desire earnestly do we have an intense conviction my people for us to walk in protocol, that's how we are going to be invited back to the ministry. That's how the church is going to invite. When, when you go to preach and they invite you to preach, this is how you know when they ain't feeling you, when they don't invite you back no more. But I want to encourage you to be invited to come back by prophesying, by speaking life, Oh, oh, what? You got cancer? I speak life in the name of Jesus. I speak the things that are not as though they are. I speak it into existence because I care about you. I'm not here about me, but I'm here about you. Intense conviction. And, and that's the type of dialogue that when we go to a new place, when, when we go to meet governments, when we go and, and you got to understand how I am. When I started talking to American Samoa, 
when I started working with American Samoa, this is how I started working with American Samoa so that everybody in the world knows how I started working with governments. I received a call from my, my mentor from the Jewish community and he said, there is some representatives that want to work with you because they're, they're asking for a liaison, but they can't find the right liaison. And I said, well, what's the catch? They want somebody to take them to church because that's how they're going to trust that person. So I said, what? Church? You're talking my, my language. I told, I told my friend, tell those representatives from American Samoa, from the government of American Samoa, tell them that I just talked to Victory Outreach Santa Ana, and I've been asked to preach on the day that they're asking to go to church. And I'm gonna preach a message. I'm gonna sing Jerusalem, and I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna preach. So when I, when the representatives of the government of American Samoa came to the church in Santa Ana, California, at Victory Outreach, I was the guest speaker. The Bible tells me to covet prophecy, so I prophesied, and everybody's crying, and and that's how. I built a relationship and they invited me to Hawaii. When I went to Alaska, all the Usos weren't in Alaska and I got their endorsement. It says, covet prophecy and don't for, forbid people from speaking in tongues. In other words, use the gifts. Now, now pay attention, my people. This is a good word right here. If you're gonna move as an ambassador, for God, for your family, for your community. Um, I'm an ambassador for the Native American indigenous communities around the world. If you're gonna operate as a, an ambassador, it says, let all things, in verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. What does all things mean? Let all things, let all men, let everything, God is saying it's not just in the church. It's not just in the church, but it, in all things and everywhere you go, do it in, in, in order, whether it's in the liquor store, whether it's at, at, at 7-Eleven, whether it's at Walmart, whether you're in front of Barack Obama, Donald Trump, whether you're in front of Biden, whether you're in front of Clintons, whoever you are, in, it, let everything be done in order at all times for the rest of your life. Don't get comfortable. Let everything, let it be daily when you get up. Be in order at home. Start some healthy habits at home and get in order with God first above all. Right when you wake up, get into protocol and start worshiping God daily. The minute you get up, no, we get up and we get on Facebook. We get up and we check our messages on our messenger. God says, be in order individually. So God says, I want you to be, when you're solo, when you're writing solo, and none of your friends, your prayer partners, when your wife's not around you, some of you, when your husband's not around, be at, in order by yourself and make sure you're in order and you're respecting all collectively as well. When you're in the masses, when you're in the crowds, when you're with the body of Christ, when you're with all of your familia, be in order in all things. It says, let all things be done decently. What is deep? It says, honest, honestly, be, be honest. You don't have to throw a front. You don't have to exaggerate. You don't got to throw name dropping. Some people will name drop and they don't even preach Jesus. It's like, wait a minute. I just flew you out here and, and I got you a ticket for you and five of your friends. And, and, and I got you a car rental for three days and I paid for, gave you vouchers, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, and I got you a hotel room for everybody. Be honest. You don't have to name drop like that. Drop the name of Jesus. These are the accepted standards. What's respectable, the moral behavior, agreeing with the standards. It says, let all things be done decently and in order, Elvia Wilson, all of our people, what does order mean? This is what order means. It means succession. If you want to go to the next level, you have to treat the gospel 
and your and your ambassadorship or your calling or your charge you have to treat it as a succession you have to treat it in order like the men and women of god that paved the way here in the united states of america that preached revival in the early 1900s we have to we it's a succession we cannot you're not inventing uh, uh, reinventing the wheel you're you're stepping into the shoes of the apostles of old and you're and you're becoming a righteous leader you don't have to name drop but you have to step in this succession you got to be that new leader the way the old leaders did it maybe maybe it's an upgraded present day truth revelation but don't try to reinvent the wheel and come off sideways and strange and weird and strange fire guys we have to operate the way the old men of old, the ancients of old did it. All of our men of God that are that have gone home, the apostle Robbie Horton, the way he did it, that's how I'm going to do it. The way my, my man of God did it, that's how I am going to do it. Yeah, I'm in 2024 and I'd be like, more money, money, more money, more money, money, more drama, minute, money, money, minute, 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 money, more money. Yes, I am different. But the principles, are of succession and it and if you haven't been under somebody that's been an ambassador to every state of our country or around the world or to every denomination maybe maybe one denomination but to all to every single native american community following one after the other this is the characteristic that god is calling us protocol and code of conduct now 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 let do we appreciate everybody everywhere we go do we have that type of attitude that's the attitude as an ambassador when we step into that church to preach i get there and i let everybody know i appreciate them i shake everybody's hand when i get there i give i try to give everybody a hug side hug i'm there to love i let everybody know i appreciate them that's how we are i, I don't need a name drop I don't need I don't need a name drop. What I need to do is appreciate and I need to get rid of that confusion. I need to strengthen relationships and it comes by a simple smile, a handshake. You get there a little earlier so you could be a part of the prayer before the meeting. Don't get there right before the meeting. And I understand I've done it. I I repent, but if it's in my power I try to get there a little extra early so that I could strengthen relationships so that Harley, Harley Swartz, so that we can build relationships. Understanding of this type of uh, uh, a message, it's going to give you favor and it's going to give you an edge. You might not have the talent right now. You might not have all the songs. But by you doing the proper protocol, they're going to invite you above somebody that's all over the radio that that they they claim they're this and that they throw snoop dogg's name they throw pup daddy's name they throw lecrae's name they throw everybody's name but jesus but because you are a person that appreciates everybody they're going to invite you and fly you in they're going to love on you and make you a part of their community a part of their family they're going to adopt you you're going to have an edge over all these people that claim that they're successful, but they don't operate with protocol. They're stepping on toes. They're disrespecting the, 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 the pastors. They go to, you know, you know how I do it when SOG crew, when me, I don't know about everybody else, but this is how I do it. When we go to an event and it's successful and the music and revival and everybody's crying young and old and they're repenting and an amazing altar call you have about a hundred people that try to give me their cards to invite me to their church invite me to their quinceanera invite us to their weddings invite us to the car show and you know what i tell them i can't take that card talk to the pastor and the pastor will give me the phone number because i want to build a relationship with the pastor because i honor him and and if i'm going to honor him I need you to honor him because it's about respect. 
It's about civility, putting others above ourselves and treating people with the golden rule the way we want to be treated. And that's how I do it. And that's why it's I, I've been doing it uh, since the 80s. That's why that's why I'm still here. That's why I plan to be here until Jesus takes us home. That's why I'm coming out with new music. That's why I'm being I'm still being invited all over the world. That that's that's why we're about to be I work with Sony and Warner Brothers and Universal and Disney and BMW and 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 and, 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 and all over in every country. Why? Because we choose to do it right because I would rather I would rather build a relationship that's healthy over money o -o over stepping on toes and one of the things pay attention to what i'm about to say when new people come oh brother robert battle axe dr robert pastor i want to get on the mic and how many songs am i going to do and no you're not going to do no songs what i need you to do let me show me that you're faithful by have a shake hands ministry and what i want you to do whether it's a neighborhood, a gang neighborhood, whether it's in those mafiosos, whether it's in bikers, whether it's at church, whether it's praise chapel, whether it's whoever, go and shake everybody's hand first. That's what I do. I need you to, when I when I'm shaking hands with the leaders and the and and all their family and and the low riders and and and, and I turn around, I need to see you shaking everybody's hand as well because for, for that's how I can I can tell that. It's a start of something new of protocol in your life by shaking everybody's hand. It's very simple. If you go to a gang neighborhood and you go there with your, your chest popped out and, and, and they got a green light, meaning every neighborhood is trying to kill them. And, and you're walking with your chest popped out. You better shake hands real quick. You better go and shake those people's hands because they're on the edge. They're they're re they they're, uh, they're they're ready to get violent, and and we're there to lead them to the Lord. So to be successful, you don't got a name drop. What you got to do is shake hands with proper etiquette, polite behavior. That's the code of conduct. And today, guys, protocol is being ignored. They. They're preaching the same message, John th uh, uh, 316, praise God for John 316, praise God for the, for the basic milk, but we need to understand protocol because protocol, there's a generation of unchurched, there's, there, there's a generation of un people that don't have pastors, they jump from church to church to church, they jump all over the place, they give up prematurely on their leaders. And protocol is dishonored and ignored. And I want to encourage anybody out there, chill out, man, and, 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 and respect and, and love. And, and you don't got to rush it. Rules of social behavior. So this, we could apply this in governments. This is how I flow with governments. This is how I flow with the Navajo Nation presidents, the last five of them. This is, this is how I roll with the Apache Nation of White River, Arizona. This is how I deal with, with when I was running for Congress in Alaska, when I was running for Congress uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Santa, when I was running in, in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, uh, uh, Florida, the role, the rules of social behavior. We could offend people. There, there's some, I'm not going to say the names, but there's some artists that everybody's, oh my God, I want to get a picture with them. And oh, they're my favorite rapper. and. But what they're doing is they're offending the hoods. And then the hoods, the people in the streets are like, nah, they're not allowed in our city no more. I, I know they're Christian, but they're not allowed here because they, they disrespect the streets. They disrespect the lowrider communities. They respect the gang neighborhoods that want to get saved. They want God. But uh, a lot of us are disrespecting the culture on the streets. So the streets are like, nah, pastor, don't bring that guy over here no more. Uh, some of my younger homies, they're, they're not. They're not saved. They might get them. So we cannot start disrespecting people, guys. And, and I don't want you to have missed opportunities. I don't want your ministry to be destroyed as quick as it started. That's how quick it'll stop. You, you will shoot yourself in the foot by not understanding and crying out for wisdom. 
business opportunities. God's trying to give you businesses so that you could create work. But because we don't respect nobody, we're losing out on business opportunities. Maybe, maybe, maybe God wants to use you to be the mediator. Maybe there's been a family feud since the 70s or the 80s, and God wants to use you to bring families back together, but we don't understand protocol. What about nations? What if right now they say, come on, Brother Robert, um, we want you to go to Israel because we want you to go to the border of Palestine and we want you to talk to them because you understand protocol. Do you know that the White House has a, a, a protocol minister that understands protocol? What about the church? Do we understand protocol? So that way we are effective in the church and out of the church and in our families and, and with the mayor and with the assembly men in the counties so that we could walk in favor. Maybe we don't want the resources, but we have to have the spirit of peace for our children that go to school in those school uh, districts. You know, here's one right here. Protocol seating. Do, you know, in the churches, every church has a protocol seating, meaning they have the front row where the pastor's at, maybe the guest speaker. or So there's protocol in everywhere that we go. There's protocol. There's protocol. Soft introduction. When you go for the first time, uh, do you have a soft Introduction. Hi, um, my name is Robert Ornelas. Um, it is a tremendous honor and great privilege to be able to be here with you to let you know that I'm grateful for my salvation and I'm here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And after a while, I'm like, ah, Jesus, ah. but there has to be a soft introduction. You can't go, oh, I just got saved and, oh, oh, uh, 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 you know, uh, all oh, I just got off of fentanyl and, oh, oh, and all kinds of craziness. Soft, when it comes to protocol, soft, Sandra, soft introduction and dress code. If you're going to be an effective person of protocol, honor the dress code. You can't go preach at Victory Outreach on, on a Sunday morning with no tie. There's there's a protocol everywhere we go. There's a diplomacy, the profession, activity, or skill of managing relationships. If 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 I bring somebody and they act like a donkey and they disrespect everybody, and I'm walking in protocol, but they they, 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 you know, um, you know, they're doing things that are inappropriate. I can never invite them back to that area. If, if I get the message and the call from the pastor years ago, we went up to the mountains and, and uh, we did a youth rally and I invited some people from the Midwest and, and uh, the pastor said, hey, brother, you could leave these people here. These people from the Midwest, it's OK, leave them. I said, okay, pastor, are you sure? Leave them. They could stay. They could stay. They could stay with the, with the leaders and the youth. Okay, I'm, I'm out of here. Up in Silver Silverwood, Silver Lake. Or... The next day, the pastor called me. Brother Robert, I can't believe you brought these people. W what happened, pastor? They were trying to pick up on the girls all night. They were, they were just talking. They didn't listen. They didn't. They didn't go to sleep when we asked them to go to sleep. They were, they were, they were, they just made a big old mess. They, when we try to correct them, they argued with us. And you, you know what? In fact, we don't ever want SOG crew to come back here ever again as well. True story. The art of dealing with people in a sensitive and effective way, guys. I want you to be sensitive. You don't have to go and be all loud, soft introduction and have discernment. Every I've got discernment. I got the Holy Spirit just like you. Who do you think you are, Moses? Don't you know my name is Korah and, and uh, we also have God? Who do you think? Have discernment. The ability to judge well. 
Melissa, uh, uh, Jacob is asking me if I'm going to go to Skid Row tonight. And he just texted me. I saw it on my phone. Can you text him and tell him I am going to go to Skid Row tonight and it, I'm going to go with him? So sorry about that. Tonight, we're talking about protocol and code of conduct. And, and I got one more word, guys, and, and I'll let you go. We're talking about the Apostle Paul, and this is how he dealt with it. I think this is going to open up eyes. This is going to be more prophetic. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 19 through 23, it says, uh, pay attention. It says, for though I be free, what does it mean to be free? Not I'm not obligated, you know, as I'm preaching here, I'm not getting paid. As I'm preaching here, I'm not obligated to go to the native communities. I'm not, obli I don't, I don't got to do nothing. I don't got to do nothing. I can stay at home. I could watch the Lakers. I could chill out with my dog, Solomon. I could hang out. Uh, there's nothing legally binding me to preach the gospel and to do this community free. I, there's nothing. I, I'm not obligated. Uh, I, uh, I'm not, I, I don't have to commit to anything. Um, I, I don't have to dedicate my life to nothing. It says, for though I be free from all men, yet I have made myself a servant unto all. I'm not committed. I don't have to do nothing. But because God has touched my life, because God rescued me when I needed it the most, because God gave me eternal salvation, because God healed my, my life, my, my mind, my heart, my marriage, my wife, Melissa, are, get, made, made us a miracle to our families. Because God is real, I have made myself a servant unto all that I might gain the more. What does it mean to gain? It means to win. I'm a winner, guys. You don't have to name drop. None of you are committed to going with us on tour. You don't, you, none of us, you, you're not obligated to do anything. You stay at home. But because Jesus is real, we're winners and we're servants. And, and, and I'm not obligated to do anything, but I've, I've committed myself as a bond servant, a slave willingly. Nobody has to put a gun to my head. Uh, no, I didn't sign no contract. I, I, the only thing I have is a covenant of Jesus Christ. And, and because of that, I have gained God's favor and I have fellowship with Jesus and I have fellowship with you. I have fellowship with leaders. It says, and unto the Jews, I became as a Jew. So you got to understand when it comes to protocol, you got to make yourself, put yourself in the shoes of the people that you're ministering to don't don't act like you know it all because you don't we, i don't i don't know it all unto the jews i became a jew what is a jew a jew is it jewish in respect to jewish nation the nation to the the jewish that are born jews those of the origin of abraham and isaac and of jacob and of joseph and his sons manasseh and the jewish religion That I might gain the Jews. He said, you know what? Put yourself in the Jews, you know, shoes so that you could gain, so you could win them. I want you to win them cholos. So put yourself in them shoes. I want you to win those people in prison. Put yourself in their shoes. Don't come at name dropping. Don't come here acting because of your achievements. Don't, don't come. Put yourself in their shoes. To them that are under the law, what does it mean to be under the law? Those that, that follow the commandments and the customs. You, The first thing I, I do when I show up to a new church or, 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 or a new movement or a new organization, a new nonprofit, I, I, I find out the commandments that they, that they live by, their bylaws. I, 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 I ask questions about the customs of God and, and how they flow and operate. I don't, I don't, I don't say nothing, but I ask a lot of questions. I, I put myself as under the law. I want to know their customs. I want to, I don't want to offend nobody. To them that are without the law as without the law. What does it mean to be without the law? 
Without the law means there's a bunch of wicked people without law, unlawful violators of the law. See, there's a lot of different movements and a lot of them that God is telling us to reach. They don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe in God. They might be killers. They, they might be disrespectful, dishonorable. They hate life. They hate people. They hate this color skin. They hate that color skin. They, they, they don't they don't like maybe some some women don't like men. Some men don't like there's all kinds of different wicked, evil, immoral. But Paul says this is what Paul said. To them that are without law. Be not without the law of God, but under the law to Christ that I might gain them that are without the law. God wants us to gain and win and be a winner and build relationships and reach the kids. You know, a lot of leaders and gangs, they love us because they say, Brother Robert, can, can you reach my son? My son's a good boy. He's in sports. My son's a good boy. Can you reach my son? I don't want him to be like me. The, 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 the dad says, I don't want him to be like me, a gangster. Verse 22 says, to the weak became I as weak. What does it mean to be weak? Feeble, strengthless, sick, lacking physical strength, guys. Delicate, deli delicate, cowardly. There's people that they don't have the heart. They let their wives, you know, they, I, 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 my wife, my wife checks me and I'm okay with that. But every now and then I'm like, hey, Melissa, hold, calm down. I love you, baby girl. And I know you're a woman of authority. But, you know, and, 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 and I say things when I have to say things. I'm not saying to be dominant and not letting your, your spouse speak, but we have to stand up and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, can we discuss this right here? Because I'm not seeing eye to eye with you right now. There's people that are faint hearted. There's people that are unclear and they're failing and they're helpless, guys. That's what weak is. It says, to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. The reason that this protocol message is coming at you right now is because God wants you to save. God wants you to save people from destruction, to keep people safe. Guys, there's people that they love coming around us because they feel safe. Safe from illness. Why? Why? What do you mean safe from illness? Yeah, I pray for them all. Hey, come here. What? You got cancer? Get over here. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lay hands on you. Get the oil out. We're going to lay hands in the name of Jesus. And we're not going to leave until the Holy Spirit allow. In the name of Jesus, be restored, man, with the withered hand. Be restored, man, a sister with the withered hand. Be restored as before that person with the withered marriage, withered prodigal son, daughter, that person that, that, that needs to be restored, be restored in the name of Jesus. I, I'm not here to claim Robert or Nellis. I, I could care less. Let SOG crew die. But I'm here to prophesy. I'm here to understand and be sensitive. I'm here to, 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 to I'm a winner and I'm here to win in the name of Jesus. I, I'm like that shepherd boy. I'm a champion in the name of Jesus. And what that means is I'm here to support. I'm here to agree in the name of Jesus. If nobody will agree with you, I will agree with you. Leonard Luna, I, I, we're here. And I know you're the same way, Lenny. We're here to heal and make whole and preserve and rescue. But when we think we know it all and, and, and we're not teachable and, and when pastors try to correct us and we we check them, what hey, don't be, don't you know that I'm an apostle, I'm an ordained apostle, bishop? Don't you know I've been I've been in ministry longer than you? Who do you think? That is that is such the devil. That is that is immoral. When somebody starts a ministry, they're the leader under God. You cannot go to their church and acting because you've been in ministry or you've been saved longer, like you're the boss hog. You got to respect that they are ordained and commissioned and have been receiving a charge and they are under somebody and they are under Jesus. It says in verse 23, 
And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Look, guys, when I go and I and I and I'm invited, I just want to be your prayer partner. I don't care about the money. I don't care if you you buy our music on iTunes. I don't care about the the, the hits on Instagram on TikTok. I don't care on Snapchat. I don't. I, I want to be your companion. I want to be your friend. I want to be a coworker. To me, there's more value in that. That's that's worth more right there when you partner with somebody and you say, brother, maybe I don't have the talent. What if I didn't have Jerusalem? Jerusalem, I'm going to find my way back to you. What if what if I didn't have more money, money, more money, more money, money, more drama, money, 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 What if I did? I just want to be your partner. That's why I'm here. I just want to be your companion and walk with you. I, I, I know you invited me to preach, but I'll clean toilets. I'll drive the forklift, man. I just want... I just want to be an example to my children. I want to be an example to this community, to my community. I want to be an example to Anaheim, North Orange County. I want to be an example to all of Orange County and all of California that it's not about me, but I'm here to partner up. I'm your prayer partner. Protocol and code of conduct. I'm going to say it again protocol and code of conduct is today's message and i'm not going to take it anymore i think it it, it, it it's something that we got to take baby steps on because there's people that have come recently and i have to tell them you can't go with us you can't go with us no more because i was asking you to to be sensitive i was asking you to to be honest because we're winners and we're here to save and we're here to gain and and we're here to put ourselves in these people's shoes and we're we're here to give a, a soft introduction i pray that i pray that that God touches you. And if you've made a mess of things with your protocol, I pray that you repent. I, I've made mistakes. I've made over the last 27 years, I've put my foot in my mouth. I've rebuked cities. Uh, um, I rebuked uh, events where like hundreds of churches were there and I rebuked them all, all crazy. I've done things that, that are not right. And so I have to understand protocol and order and to be honest and, 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 and to be a partner, a companion in this walk that we're in. Brother Lenny, Leonard Luna, if anybody needs prayer, this is the time right now before we get going, guys. Um, I love you out there. I thank God for you. I thank you, Mother Sandra from Alamosa, Colorado. She says, absolutely don't disrespect anyone. Bring people together in God's way protocol is so important. And 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 you, Miss Sandra, you understand you work, you're you're a an advocate in the courts. You can't just get up in the court when you're advocating and, hey, that's not right, judge, uh, county judge, district judge. Who do you think you are? I'm a woman of God. That is so wrong. But there's there's timing. And you have found a way. You'll take that judge to lunch. And, and, and you're a prayer partner of the judges. And that's how you are effective. That's how you're effective. You you take the judges to lunch. And you don't get into the case. You just let them know that you're praying for that person in the case. 
And that's why I respect you because you understand protocol. And that's why God is using you with governments. When I, when I seen you last time, I seen you like Moses coming down the mountain. I seen, I seen like lightning on your face. We are continuing to pray for Miss Chacha from Santa Barbara, California, for her mother and her daughter. And, and we have to be sensitive. We can't be slow, be, be quick to hear, slow to, slow to speak, slow to anger. I love you guys out there, everybody out there. My wife, Melissa, loves you. Um, the team loves you. I'm excited. I'm excited that we have a song coming out for Thanksgiving, guys, called Hold On, featuring uh, myself and Slim Chances from Minneapolis, Minnesota. So excited because the song Hold On, um, it's just, it's, it explains itself. Hold on. When it gets crazy, hold on. When some of you right there, you feel like, like, like nobody's backing you up. Hold on. Kenny, Sochi. They say, we love you too. Hold on. Just hold on. Don't run. Don't just be passing by, right? Don't don't just make it a quick, a, a pit stop. You got a lot of people, they're, they're jumping from church to church to pastor to pastor. Hold on. If it's not here, go somewhere where you could hold on. I want you to be effective. Understanding protocol. God wants you... To be effective in the church. Some, you know, a lot of us are raised in the church. So we're very, we understand the Christian dialogue lingo very well. We know how to play the part good. But can we be winners in the church? And can be we we be winners with the city council? Can be winner, can can we be winners that that are sensitive in the church? Or do we go outside the church and we cuss everybody out? Miss Lindsay says from Curbside Community Center, please pray for Omar's safety in Mexico and his family as his brother is currently admitted in the hospital for critical liver problems. In the name of Jesus, in, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh, in the name of Jesus. Father, you, you heard the word tonight, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. We are we are we are putting ourselves in in uh, in their shoes, mighty God, and and partnering up with them tonight, mighty God, and all Omar's family in Mexico, mighty God, and and we are in agreement, in agreement, mighty God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for a a, a soft, slow introduction that we would just be slow, mighty God, and take our time in prayer. And, and give you thanksgiving, mighty God, and honor you, O great and mighty God. Healer, our Redeemer lives. I love you, Jesus, and thank you for blessing Omar's family. Miss Sandra says, holding on. Blessings, Robert and Melissa. I love you. I love you, Miss Sandra. Please, for the rest of our lives, I love you. I love you. I honor you, woman of God. I honor you. I respect you. I respect the entire city of Alamosa. I respect you all. I honor you all. I, I, I give God thanks and praise for you all. Um, thank you. Thank you. I, I will I, I will never for the rest of my life stop thanking you. Please understand that. My, the entire Ornella's family will never stop thanking you. God, God bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you, woman of God. Scotty Baker from Curbside Community Center says, make a song protocol. Hey, Scotty, what? <laughs> God is so good. Amen. Love this word. And yes, I need to do better. Amen. Prayers, getting great results for kingdom business and lift up pastors Abel and Heidi and family and businesses so to God's work. Thanks for your love and inspiration and encouragement. I, I know you have that anointing, Scotty. 
that people in businesses, they just write the check. I understand that. They give you the, the check. I get it. And, 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 and God uses, that's your ministry. They, the businesses write the check ministry. And, and, uh, and I thank you brother for who you are. I thank you for being a blessing and, and, uh, and I appreciate you. And I look forward to working with you as a companion walking side by side as you share testimonials everywhere we go. Thank you, Brother Scotty. You are a tremendous uh, blessing to us. And I look forward to seeing what the, the Almighty is going to do with, 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 with some crazies like me and some crazies like you. But God will use us. God will use us. I'll hold on for a second if anybody else needs prayer. Come on, man. Step out by faith. Step out by faith. Step out by faith. Step out by faith, brother. Step out by faith, sister. If you need prayer, if you need prayer, if you need prayer. Before we hang up, I want to pray for you. I want to I want to cry out to God for you. I want to let God know we we want to come together. I'll, I'll pray for you individually and we'll pray for you collectively. Letting God know that that we love you and we honor you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, mighty God. We lift up our partners right now, mighty God, all our companions in the gospel, all our companions in advocacy. All our companions, mighty God, in the field, in every state, in every United States territory, every single Native American community. We, we give you thanks, Lord. We, we ask for wisdom. We ask for wisdom, mighty God. Now, now bless us openly so that we solve the issues because there's a lot of them. Father, I repent, mighty God, for for thinking that I know all the protocol. I, I don't understand anything, mighty God. I don't understand anything. But what I do understand is I forget the things which are behind me and I, and I move forward to the mark of the high calling of God. I love you guys out there. Jesus loves you. My family loves you. My wife, Melissa, loves you. Um, if you can't send a message right now of prayer, feel free to hit us up on Messenger. Uh, let us know how we can uh, just be your prayer partner. And, and we love you. Thank you to all the SOG crew members that are there that, that are, are trying to understand protocol. All we can do is take baby steps. You're not going to jump where I'm at right out the gate. It, it, it takes baby steps. I'd rather you take baby steps so that you do it right, so that you're sensitive. Miss Lindsay says, we love and appreciate you as well. Amen. Tell, tell J Bay, Miss J Bay, that, that we're proud of her. Amen, big brother, family, indeed, yes, Lord. And, and allow God's flow in and through me for his glory and love you. Pastor Rob, when souls crazy faith and love this great word, I repent too. Side by side prayers for me. Amen. Kenny and, and Sochi says, blessings to you, Melissa Evans or Nellis. Thank you for the message. Lindsay says she heard you and said, hi, 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 Miss J Bay. I pray that uh that you're writing music and that you get inspired and 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 that that you would be effective reaching people the way that the way that God is using us. God is going to use you even at a greater level. And 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 you're going to be re reaching out. I see you reaching out to to royalties and I see you reaching out to kings and queens and I see you reaching out to 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 CEOs and I see you reaching out to uh just nerds at college. I see you I see you reaching out to the chess club and 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 and, and computer nerds and 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 and, and good people and and, and I'm very proud of you, Miss J. Bay. And Jesus loves you. And, and all of us, every single one of us, we have a story and we've all gone through a lot of trauma gro growing up. And you're not alone. But by being a companion and a partner, even at a young age, God's going to raise you up very fast. 
and and we look forward to seeing that blessing and that advancement and that ascension as you climb higher and as you climb higher for God. And we're going to have days that we're not going to feel like climbing higher. But it's okay. We don't go by feelings. We walk by faith and not by sight. So blessings to everybody out there. God bless you guys. Blessings from the entire SOG crew, uh, SOG crew family, all of our partners, lifelong friendships. We honor you. Jesus loves you. Uh, be happy. Be happy. Be happy. We speak peace and blessings over you, your children, grandchildren, wherever you're at, on the phone, on the tablet, uh, um, in prison somewhere on a tablet. Uh, oh, right before I, I turned it off. Lenny, thank you for this message, my brother. I repent in Jesus' name. May you continue being used by our Father for his kingdom. Oh, man, bro, what an honor. What an honor, Lenny. What an honor to be your, your friend. What If people only knew what this, the crazy stuff we did when we were kids. What an honor, bro, that you are such a successful person when it comes to your marriage, when it comes to your walk with God and your seriousness and sensitivity to helping others. Brother, you are an example and an inspiration. Thank you so much, my bro. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I bless you, bro. I bless you. I bless you. You, Everywhere I go, bro, wherever I go on this earth, on this planet, bro, you, you go with me. And, and that's for life. That is for life in the name and in the blood of Jesus, brother. I honor you and I, I thank God for you. Don't ever forget that. When... When, when, when you, when, if you ever feel down, you know you got your bro. Your bro loves you, man. I love you, bro. I tell everybody about you, man. Scotty Baker says, God gave me song title at doctor's office. Take it to the cross. Wow, ask Pastor Clyde Rivers. He spoke over me. Love you and your family and your ministry and pray for pharmacy skateboard shop. In the name of Jesus, if 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 you go to the to the skateboard shop and they give you shoes and you happen to find a pair of twelves, uh, you know what I'm saying. You know I'm, I'm hip hop, but I'll rock I'll rock skateboard shoes. JBS said, "Thank you for the prayers." Amen. I love you guys out there. Jesus loves you. Tonight is our uh, Tuesday night. Uh, SOG crew Bible study titled protocol and code of conduct and keep me in prayer that I grow in this message and that I learn and that I dissect it and that I uh, just uh, that I'm just sensitive and faithful to God and that uh, you know that I fall deeper in love with the Holy Spirit deeper in love with my wife just deeper in love with my children my community and with my partners in the name of Jesus, we out.